Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Jason Allard, and I've been working on a web series called Abandoned From Above, where I visit interesting abandoned places and dig into their pasts to show you why they deserve our respect and attention. I have some awesome people who come with me on these explorations, but outside of the explore, I'm a one-man team putting these videos together. So I want to go through my whole process with you guys. I built out chapters here so you can skip around to whatever you find most interesting or hear me out, watch the whole thing. First is pre-production. This is deciding where I'm going to shoot my next video. It comes down to the time of year and what I find most interesting at the moment. So in the summer, I like to find places that look super overgrown and post-apocalyptic. It really shows how they're being reclaimed by nature. For example, the abandoned plane crash was planned specifically for the middle of summer at golden hour. We happened to get the coordinates to it at the perfect time, so it ended up looking like an episode of Lost which I was amped about. In the winter, I like to find places that are more out in the open or that look nice with snow on the ground, like the Ramped Hill Mill remains. There was a ghost story, so having it be freezing and still lent itself well to the tale. Okay, I just wanna say, I've been here alone for about 45 minutes and no ghost sightings. Huge bummer, but still absolutely beautiful out here. I always say abandoned places are beautiful, so I show them in what I think are the best conditions. Once I choose a place on my list, I do a few days of research on it to make sure there's an interesting narrative. This is something I do outside of my full-time job, so I gotta make sure it's worth it. I'll have a Word doc with everything I found, just copy and pasted with links saved for references, it's just an info dump where afterwards I can parse it down and build the script. I also make a folder with all of the historic photos I can find. This way, when I visit the place, I know every shot I need to get to tell the story or specific details to look out for. Also, when I get there, I'll have context as to what I'm looking at. I never want to go into a place blind. Plus, I get real excited in the days leading up to the shoot because it's game time. So I have to balance my excitement exploring with filmmaking and getting the cinematic shots. The day of the shoot, I have one main gear bag and my drone case. For every video I've made recently, I use two main cameras. First is most important, my drone, which is the DJI Mini 2, which is tiny and looks like a toy. It shoots in 4K and I get about an hour of flight time with the three batteries. The second piece of gear is my DJI Osmo Pocket, which is like a drone without the props. It's a 4K camera on a gimbal that's perfect for run and gun shooting. I work with cinema cameras pretty often and this $200 camera is now my main workhorse on urbex shoots, which is just insane to me. It doesn't provide a lot of depth in the shots since it's not a wide aperture and the focal length is set, but it's great for wider establishing shots or tracking shots in the daylight. I also have a Sony A7S III, which is what I'm using to shoot this, paired with a $20 lapel microphone off Amazon. This is the same setup I used to shoot Nick Placer in the Providence facade video. This is spray paint on a wall. People love this. With this camera, I can really get the settings dialed in for a nice cinematic look. The exploration is a mix between enjoying the experience and making sure I get every possible angle. We show up prepared, so the only thing that consistently surprises me about these places is how massive they can be. The abandoned train station, for example, the main lobby was big enough for me to fly the drone in without worrying about hitting anything.
I have no problem flying my drone inside places if it means I can get a nice angle. The train station was big enough that I could get an awesome revealing shot for the start of the video. I shoot everything with the edit in mind though. Once you're good, mm -hmm. I'm gonna we'll tuck our stuff behind there. Yep. And then I'll open up that door and I'm gonna get some like tracking shots. Okay. With the Osmo, just like kind of revealing everything and then we'll do the same thing with the projector. Cool. At the drive-in theater, I was with my friend Dave and he was pulling rotating shots with his gimbal. So we ran it a few times heading into the huge screen, so it would transition from outside into this spaceship looking interior. Kind of a dizzying look up into the skeleton of the screen. That shot alone was like 20 minutes of setup and multiple takes. The entire video is around 11 minutes and we were there for four or five hours just getting angles. I tried to avoid talking too much while I'm recording, partly because I don't want to ruin the ambiance, and mainly because I don't want to say anything factually incorrect. I save my talking for the voiceover afterwards when I know I won't annoy any historians watching. I try to stay organized, so after the shoot, the first thing I do is get all the different media into subfolders. Everything like drone shots, graphics, historic photos, music, etc. Um, it adds up quick once I get into the edit, so it's good to know where everything is. Each video ends up having hundreds of raw files. Once everything is organized, then I can get started on the editing side. This is where the whole video comes together, and the first step is getting my script built out. I get this as close to final as possible before I start laying out clips in the timeline. It's like laying down the outside of a puzzle first, and then you build inside from there. I edit using Final Cut Pro on my Mac. Before I put clips down, I record a rough take of the entire script, which gives me an idea of timing for the intro, my animations, and clips throughout the story. I come into the project with some ideas, but I don't like to storyboard it. I like just making it up as I go along. This lets me be creative and goofy with what's going on screen, but still be grounded to the script. Each video has thousands of edits and elements inside, and there are some nights where I'll edit for two or three hours and only get 20 seconds of video cut because I'm trying out different effects or I get an entirely new idea for a scene. So there's a lot of trial and error, and I'm very particular about what's going on screen. So every shot is there for a reason. This is what a typical Abandoned From Above project looks like in Final Cut Pro. This is the timeline for the abandoned Ramtail factory. If we zoom out, you can see there are hundreds of elements. Everything down here is audio tracks and effects. Here is the main video track with my animations. Everything above here is titles, video effects, and overlays. If we zoom into the timeline, I'll show you one animation. This is within a compound clip, so it keeps everything organized. Within this one 12 second clip, there's another batch of titles and more audio effects. Within this clip is another one with five more layers and effects. It might look kind of crazy. This is dozens of hours of editing, but this is the most fun I have in the entire process. If I'm not entertained while I'm editing, then how would you guys be entertained while watching it? I just keep trying to make the type of videos that I would want to see, so I'm glad that you're all enjoying them. So that covers the bulk of what I do, so make sure you check out the videos on my channel to see how all of this combines to make the final product. But, you know, if you have any specific questions, just leave a comment or send me a message. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all soon.